The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want Sam percent off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. The information on this podcast is my opinion and some internet research. You don't know the power of the dark side. Welcome to Star Wars Chatter, hosted by Andrew Mazark. <laughs> now you're losing your power. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Chatter, I'm Andrew Van Sark, and this is your safe space with Star Wars and the music. So let's get things running, let's get things flowing. Today we're going to talk about Ahsoka Tano, you know, and her new show that's coming in August. And there's a lot of things we can talk about, like small details you might have missed, and, uh, you know, the trailer breakdown and whatnot. So let's get it flowing. So, um, the Star Wars celebration on Europe is on and already delivering the goods you know it's already de- it delivered the goods and uh with the first proper teaser trailer of ahsoka uh up and are running and it's on our hands and we can listen to it watch it enjoy it and then what and do all the things we like to do with the star wars trailers get excited about it you know because ahsoka is a really awesome character rosario Dawson has done a great 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 uh portrayal of the character and uh i i love where things are heading here so um, our favorite uh, uh, Togruta Jedi is back, and this time Ahsoka Tano is preparing to save the galaxy from a threat that could very well mean the fall of everything the original trilogy heroes fought so hard to build. So without further ado, let's jump in t- and see what's behind every bit of this teaser, shall we? You know? And if you have anything to say, you can let me know down in the chat down below. And uh, welcome to the show, Kiraitone. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you all being here. You know, I'm Andrew Van Zark, and this is your safe space with Star Wars and music. So let's get it flowing. Um, so as it's known, Ahsoka Tano actually left the Jedi Order in its wa- wa- wanting years, you know? She was accused of, of, of something that happened within the uh, Jedi Temple, and uh, she was like, you know what, I'm leaving, I don't want to be part of this, and uh, she left, you know? A victim of a conspiracy depicted in the Clone Wars animated series. So her true status is now a mystery, um, whether she's a Jedi, whether she's uh, a gray Jedi, you know, Luke's, uh, Lucasfilms has always portrayed and, and said that there's no such thing as gray Jedi, that is totally Legends thing, that's for the video games, some books, some comics, but that is not canon. And I'm like, come on, gray Jedis are amazing, I'm pretty sure uh, that could be a thing, you know? Yep, yep, at the wrong, at the wrong place for that, you know, totally, totally, you know, so... As she was never properly knighted and never rose above the rank of Padawan, but uh, we've seen her after all in that in Star Wars Rebels, The Mandalorian, and The Book of Boba Fett, and she appears to be working with Luke Skywalker, aka Mark Hamill. So it is safe to assume she can be called a Jedi again. Or do you think Ro- Rosario Dunson portraying Ahsoka? You know, do you think Ahsoka Tano could be uh, called a Jedi again? You know, I don't, I, 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 I don't know if she could be considered a Jedi. She does Jedi-like things, but I wouldn't know if she's completely a Jedi, because, like I said, it might be a Legends uh, uh, of vocabulary, but she's great Jedi for for sure. She has a bit of both, you know? So in the trailer, she's wandering the ruins of what seems to be an Asian temple, perhaps even an old Jedi building. As she says, the Jedi fell a long time ago, you know, so every bit of knowledge about them should be uh, accounted for the uh, protected, you know, accounted and protected. And she could also be looking for leads about the worlds between worlds and a nexus of the force that allows one to move through the blurred lines of time and space you know so she visited it in rebels and now we see her ba- battling ray stevenson's character in a location visually similar to this realm maybe and i say maybe she likely uh, managed to go back you know a familiar jedi face we see is huang 
Uh, although we don't know if he's talking to Ahsoka or to someone else. Um, you know, it, it begs the question, you know. So as he uh, was the light lightsaber smith uh, for the Asian Jedi Order, whom we met back in the Clone Wars, uh, which reigned thousands of generations of the Jedi in the arts of crafting their weapon, even the likes of Yoda and Maze Windu. You know, so in other words, in this show of Ahsoka, the Rebels crew is back. So seeing the Rebels characters in live action was an old dream of fans. Many fans were expecting to see these characters in live action, you know, and now it's finally happening. You know, it's finally being a thing and I cannot wait to experience every single one of them in live action. So the teaser shows Natasha Leo Bordasio replacing the voice actor of Tia Sikar. Um, as Mandalorian warrior and artist Sabin Wren, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead uh, taking over the role of Ace pilot and Rebel General Hera Syndulla. Hera Syndulla is one of my favorites, but I have to say that Sabin is by far my favorite. You know, um, and we're also going to get a live-action version of Jedi Ezra Bringer, who was voiced by Taylor Gray and will now be played by Emma S. Vandy. You know. Yes, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, at some point, we do have Hair of the Empire stuff in within this uh, whole show, and uh, there's going to be Thrawn throwing here, for sure, you know? There's going to be Thrawn, for sure. I, there, you, do, you do see Thrawn in the trailer, uh, like a little glimpse of Thrawn, and if, if Thrawn wasn't in the Ahsoka show, I would have been like, what the hell are you doing, Disney? Thrawn is really essential when it comes to the Rebels, you know? So why wouldn't they have Thrawn in the show, you know? So these two members of the Rebel crews that weren't shown in the teaser, though, uh, Les Atmos also uh, turned Pilot Seb or, 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 or Restlios, uh, and young Jason Sindula, uh, Hera's son with her older lover. Um, Jedi Kanan, the Jaros, and it's currently unknown if we'll see the, those two. But Seb, being a New Republic pilot, now implies even the possibility of a cameo by Captain Carson Taylor. So fingers are crossed, fingers are crossed. Yeah, yeah. Yo, you're gonna have to um uh you're gonna have to check that out that trailer you know that trailer is gonna be uh awesome in your eyes you're gonna be like wow this has a lot of things to acquire and not acknowledge um i haven't seen um such an awesome trailer since 2015 of star wars sure i loved the mandalorian trailer i loved the bad batch trailer and all those things were amazing not gonna lie but this ahsoka trailer had me jumping on my on my on my uh room had me clapping had me going crazy because i do think that it has a lot of awesome things uh so things like that we have to acknowledge and we have to acquire so let, let's let's flow with things and and uh continue uh exploring what the ahsoka teaser trailer has to show us you know so, um, there's things to, to, to acknowledge here with Ray Stevenson and Ivan Sacco, you know? So, uh, watching videos and seeing all the, this stuff, you know, with the captions on can be really helpful, you know? Thanks to this, we know that Ray Stevenson's character is called Balan, who seems to be what Legends lore would define as, you know, Dark Jedi. A Dark Jedi! Jedi, you know, a fucking dark Jedi. This has only been a Legends vocabulary uh, thing, you know, it's only been a Legends thing. We've never seen a dark Jedi within this. Sure, we've seen um, the Inquisitors and whatnot, which is similar to a dark Jedi, but no, an Inquisitor is completely a different thing, a all different breed, in my opinion, you know? So, a dark, a dark side wielder who's not necessarily a Sith, but not a Jedi anymore. To Stevenson is a renowned actor, and seeing him in Star Wars is 
fucking great. So Balin could be an, an, ad an adaptation of Jorus Seapoth, a dark Jedi from the Herder Empire's trilogy of nobles by Timothy San. Uh, in that storyline, uh, he has and was an ally of one of other than Grand Admiral Thrawn himself. You see, so Balin was uh, Admiral uh, Thrawn's, you know, ally. And that lets you know that this character Thrawn is gonna be in the show. Um, so, uh, who dreamed of uh, uh, courting Luke Skywalker as the apprentice and dominated Asian cloning technologies. So going as far as even creating a clone of the Jedi Master, weirdly called Luke Skywalker. Really, if you're connecting the dots here and uh, you're checking out the clone technology uh, that has uh, been recurring subject throughout Star Wars, both the Mandalorian and the animated series The Bad Badge uh, have talked about this and later even recreated an important Herdo Empire location, the Mount Tantis facility of the planet Wayland. You see where this is going, right? You know? Hear me out, hear me out. Unfortunately, Ivan Sakno, those character's name wasn't shown in the captions, but uh, she appears to be Balan's apprentice, wielding a red lightsaber, aching to the one used by the Inquisitors of old. You know, she's fast and skilled and blonde. So let's hope she's not an adaptation of Luke, right? That would be weird to see a female Luke, um, most fans might say, but I don't really give a damn if they switch through the gender of Luke Skywalker, but, uh, you know, because it's also really cool to see a female version of Luke Skywalker or something, you know, along those lines, so the character that we've all been interested in knowing and, and experiencing within the Ahsoka show is Thrawn and Morgan Elsbeth. So, we've only seen Grand Admiral Thrawn from behind, and couldn't make out who is playing him. Unf unfortunately, if the Force heard us and was willing to tell us the exact thing, it will be by his voice actor in Rebels, Lars Mikkelsen. But, let's keep an open mind about this, you know? So, the Imperial Warlord has immense respect for the late blue, not really Emperor Palpatine, Yeg Magdarmin. So, his uh, conducting the efforts to bring back the Empire and to gather cloning technology makes complete sense, in my opinion. So, in live action, Thrawn's name was first mentioned by Ahsoka in her debut episode of The Mandalorian Season 2, The Jedi. She was fighting uh, Magistrate Morgan Elizabeth, Diana Lee Inosanto, you know, who enslaved the world of Corvus and the city of Kaladin, probably delivering natural resources to Thrawn, the Seventh Fleet. Um, we see then uh, Elizabeth again in the teaser for Ahsoka, you know, meaning she will be back. And now knowing more about Ahsoka Tano and her allies like Din Djarin, uh, Pero Pascal, and uh, Grogu, the droids she used on Ka Kalodan are once again seen in the teaser fighting Ahsoka Tano. Bearing the sigil for the seventh fleet in their head. So in the teaser, Elizabeth appears in the same room as Thrawn, but in different moments. She's an original character, you know, but her role could be similar to that of a of Captain Pajillion, you know, Thrawn's right hand man in the Herd of Empire novels. Uh, Pajillion was name uh, checked in Rebels. But that doesn't mean he will necessarily have a role of his own in Ahsoka. So, Ahsoka will premiere in uh, August 2023. So, make yourself adjusted to that. Put on your schedule. And uh, don't forget to look at the trailer. You're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it. And you're going to have a lot of fun with that. So, 
Now let's dive into some small details that you might have missed in the trailer. So being a Jedi isn't as easy as some, uh, someone makes it out to be, especially if one is used to being respected and treated with honor and not haunted across the galaxy. Besides the shifting opinions of Force users throughout the Star Wars galaxy, which tends to reflect whoever is uh, in current power, uh, Ahsoka Tano in this case, uh, uh, also has the rather d uh, d dubious uh, uh, distinction of being the Padawan of Anakin Skywalker. This means that Ahsoka feels some guilt upon the unable to stop her former friends and mentors downfall, which serves as one of her primary motives. So although Ahsoka has popped up in Disney, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, it seems as if it's her turn for a spin-off show so having just released a brand new trailer for ahsoka uh looks uh, looks to be everyone's favorite uh taruga travel across the galaxy and runs into old allies and searches for growing threats namely the infamous grand admiral thrawn and uh, featuring plenty of callbacks and references to other shows and books within star wars franchise the trailer for ahsoka is jam-packed with potential plots teases and easter eggs a lot you know i never thought that hair herd of the empire would have been shown as a uh, live action or, or on the or on the screen at some shape or form herd of the empire was probably the biggest thing that we had of star wars right after the last uh, prequel uh, of, of Revenge of the Sith, you know, and uh, Heard of the Empire were like these uh, this three uh, trilogy books that actually gave us a bunch of information from Star Wars before Disney decided to call it Legends, you know, non-canon. Um, and it's sad because I do think that Heard of the Empire is a great, great book. I haven't read it per se. I've only heard it. It's different to re reading it and hearing it. I don't remember much of the details, but I do remember enjoying every single minute of that audiobook for sure for sure. So the Ahsoka trailer hit the grounds running, featuring numerous returns characters from Star Wars Rebels, as we mentioned before, you know? So including our first look at Grand Admiral Thrawn, which I can't wait to see him in, in, in screen, honestly. Um, fans know since season two of The Mandalorian that Ahsoka was after the uh, chief military officer, but we know now, so since you know, we now know that uh, he's coming in Ahsoka. So to make Star Wars fans even more excited about this, uh, the titular Jedi mentions that she'd heard whispers of Thrawn's return as Herd of the Empire. While some may see this as a throwaway line to simply set up the new villain's presence, fans of the extended universe will immediately recognize the reference to Thrawn's first appearance in Timothy Sands' novels, Herd of the Empire. So the, the story takes place five years uh, before the Battle of Endor and the defeat of the Empire. Grand Admiral Thrawn gathers his Imperial forces, including a clone of Jedi Master Jorus uh, Sobath, and uh, becoming a massive threat to the New Republic. So, the fan favorite novel is the first of in Sand's trilogy, including Thrawn to be uh, in the Star Wars universe, and many consider it the go-to Thrawn story. If Lucasfilm is adapting parts of it for the character's arc in Ahsoka, the fans are in quite uh, uh, uh the treat you know and um uh i i remember uh when they first said that they were uh, like interpreting some things and making some things from her the empire canon it's like wow that's amazing because her the empire is an amazing uh, book you know dreamer warrior yes i do agree that those books are great um i haven't seen i haven't seen and read the the comics uh of, of uh, her the empire i should dive into that at some point in my uh, life um because uh, i think that that is uh, like the w w most coolest thing that i've seen of star wars when it comes to like books you know those are like the best books of star wars you know um so the 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 dark jedi we see with the red lightsaber is none other than joros sobath so one of the most uh, omnibus figures in this brand new trailer for ahsoka is a darkly dressed force user played by ray stevenson although not directly named or addressed viewers can see that he is calm cool and collected even as he ruthlessly attacks a group of rebels with a bright red lightsaber and the trademarked seath move of force choke 
However, since Ahsoka isn't wasting any time by showing that Grand Admiral Thrawn will be a major component of this upcoming show, it wouldn't be too far off of a stretch to think that Stevenson's character might be from the same book series that Thrawn originated from. You know, introducing the aforementioned Herd of the Empire book Joris Seaboth is a Dark Jedi that is an instrumental in many of Thrawn's plans, and he is actually a clone of slain Jedi Master Joros Soba. Um, so a former friend of the Emperor Palpatine, uh, clones are usually designed with a misspelled name in the world of Star Wars, and considering that cloning plays a major component in both The Mandalorian and the new movie trilogy featuring a clone Palpatine, it would make sense if Ahsoka featured a clone Jedi to highlight that this has been an ongoing process spanning decades. Whoever Stevenson is playing on this show is sure to be a great interest. Whether it is uh, to be Jorvis or some other character, it will be fascinating uh, to see how he connects to Thrawn. You know? So there's a Tuka Cat, aka new merch opportunity uh, with this uh, trailer. Um, yeah, there, 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 there's a lot of things to to acquire from all of this from uh, from uh, the trailer, you know. And I, I'm really happy and excited for this and everything that has been throwing and flowing around. So as every new show comes in from Star Wars, there's a hundred percent potential for uh, merch. You know, we had Grogu. We had the Ewoks, um, so why not the new little cat from uh, the trailer, you know, a Tuka cat, aka the new merch for Star Wars, you know? So every Star Wars project uh, centers on around some sort of form of conflict, and Ahsoka won't be short of space battles and threats that will pose arduous challenges for our heroes. Uh, people will, will suffer, uh, peril will uh, befall corners of the galaxy, but however, this franchise is also... Uh, a great, 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 great piece of media that understands that cute furry creatures are useful for when it comes to launching a successful merchandising campaign. Not gonna lie, it is, you know? So, uh, the cuteness, you know, of this, uh, little cat, uh, respites from all the battles beyond the stars, you know? So I can't, I can't see it any other way. This is clearly merch opportunity. So Sokka will continue this trend with Toka cats. As you can see from the trailer, these orange critters are adorable as heck, you know? But they do more than sit around and look pretty, you know? So Tukas are known for their hunting skills and they're predominantly used for getting rid of pests. Um, the creatures have appeared in live-action Star Wars projects before, mostly seen on the Mandalorian, where they can be spotted uh, roaming, roaming um, through garbage and uh, snarling at Grogu, you know, the cute little baby Yoda. So the Tuka cat in the Ahsoka trailer looks cleaner. Uh, and friendlier than some of the other peers, you know, uh, and uh, it's a big cameo suggests that it might be most significant feline to grace the Star Wars franchise to date, you know, so another thing we can take out from the trailers that Ahsoka has Clone Wars reference. So the opening scene in the trailers are full of homage, but there is one sequence in particular that really stands out. You know, when Rosario Dawson and Pony Minus, uh, character un unsheaths uh, her lightsaber, she proceeds to use the force to spin them around and open up a hall in the ground. It seems that she's getting ready for battle. As she, uh, she's used to the same maneuver during dangerous situations in the past. So this movie is a reference to a big Ahsoka moment from Star Wars The Clone Wars. In one episode, the Force-sensitive uh, Togruta performs the sequence so that she and Rex uh, can escape a group of clones during Order 66. Um, it's a suitable moment in the trailer, but e eagle-eyed Star Wars fans will have a blast with it for sure. 
Hell yeah. So that being said, the Clone Wars homage isn't the only Easter egg to crop up in the teaser from Ahsoka Tano, you know? The same sequence also shows and allows the title character to do her best impression of a character who's synonymous with a hit movie franchise about vampires, werewolves, and other horrors that pose a threat to humanity. That brings us to a nod to none other than the motherfucking films of Underworld. Oh, yes. Underworld. Yes, yes, yes. The Star Wars Underworld is an unproduced TV series that would have chronic chronicled organized crime in the city of Coruscant. Unfortunately, the project died after Disney acquired Lucasfilm and pressed ahead with new movies and series, and there aren't any plans to resurrect Underworld at the time of this writing, so, and, and of this recording, you know, and podcast. So, the good news, however, is that the Ahsoka trailer pays homage to another Underworld that has absolutely nothing to do with the Star Wars franchise. So in one scene of the teaser trailer, um, that titular character uses her weapons to cut through a stone surface and drop down to an underground lair. The scene is questioned and reminisced uh, of a scene from 2003's Underworld, which sees Kate uh, Be- Bexel's uh, vampire hunters Selene uh, blast herself through a floor and land the same way as Ahsoka does in the trailer for the Disney Plus series. So Ahsoka and Underworld both revolve around butt-kicking women, and it's nice to see them in Star Wars. You know, the series gives a shout-out to the entertaining action horror blockbuster of Underworld. If you haven't seen Underworld, you are missing out. I loved Underworld when it came out. I remember, like, renting it. I don't know it was Blockbuster or something like that. But that was a fun film to watch nonetheless. So, uh, the same shots uh, uh, as Rebels can be seen on the trailer. So, it's about time Star Wars Rebels gets the respect it deserves. And it looks like Ahsoka will give fans plenty to chew on. And it picks up where the animated series left off. So, uh, at the minute... Uh, uh, at the 40 seconds of the trailer, better said, uh, in the, we see Sabin, you know, standing on a tower, watching as Ahsoka's T6 shuttle flies overhead. The scene is directed, uh, and direct reference to how Sabin's story ended in Rebels, proving that Dave Filoni is here to give fans what they want. And I might say that Dave Filoni is by far my favorite producer or director that we have in Star Wars at the moment. Uh, you can you can fight me as you want. You can leave me any comments you want. But I think Dave Filoni is the man, the goat within Star Wars behind the scenes. So at the end of Rebels, the Ghost Crew have all gone their separate ways. Five years after the Battle of Endor, Sabin remains on Lothal, watching over the capital city from her tower. When Ahsoka's sheep flies past, the Mandalorian then leaves Lothal with the Jedi, assisting her in the search for Ezra. So the version of, uh, in Ahsoka trailers is nearly a ratio of one to one remake, bringing the two characters reuniting to live action. It looks like Disney Plus series takes place around the same time as the flash forward at the end of the Rebels. So, will Ahsoka's show recurring Sabin to look for Ezra and hunt down Grand Admiral Thrawn? Hmm, that we'll have to find out once the series comes out, you know? So, on the other hand, another thing we can take out from the trailer is that a callback to some infamous hallways and fights, you know? Uh, these poor New Republic soldiers really just can't catch a break. It wasn't enough uh, that Rogue One gave fans one of the greatest Star Wars scenes of all time, ending the movie with Darth Vader cutting down an army of soldiers in a halfway, in a hallway. Uh, but it looks like they'll be victims uh, of that once again in Ahsoka. So at the 115 mark of the trailer, we see Ray Stevenson's new Sith taking a small group of New Republic troopers on a ship. The soldiers cannot do much but shoot their blasters at him, but it's a small hallway, you know, you can't do much. Um, so as they effortlessly deflect uh, the shots, he, uh, he walks closer and closer to them. 
Um, the brief scene is oddly reminiscent of Vader's climactic ending on Rogue One. Not to mention Darth Maul's hallway scene from the Clone Wars, and it definitely seems like these New Republic soldiers will suffer a similar fate. We see one of them uh, force choked, and while the others don't really look to have anywhere to hide from this mysterious member of the dark side. So earlier this year, Star Wars Rebels uh, star Freddy Prinzin Jr. claimed that Dave Filoni directed the iconic Rogue One scene. The Ahsoka trailer certainly seems to validate that statement, making for an even stronger connection to Rogue One. So this show is going to bring us closer into more information with Ahsoka Tano. I really am excited to see where, where this is going to take us. I, I cannot wait to enjoy uh, some more uh, Star Wars content. I need to finish the cl uh, um, the Bat Batch. Um, I need to finish the Bat Batch. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm about to finish episode 10. So I need to go watch 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. In order to finish the whole thing. Um, so, yeah. I, I cannot wait. And now you know some details from the Ahsoka trailer. Once I get more information out of Ahsoka Tano and uh, her show... I'll be posting you guys here on AMP and uh, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, whichever you're, wherever you're listening, you know, whether it's day or night, it doesn't matter. Good morning, good night. It doesn't matter. The force is strong. The force is always there. And um, I am really hyped for this and I cannot see it any other way. I've been hyped for Ahsoka ever since they mentioned they're going to do a live action of Ahsoka. Ahsoka is one of my favorite characters of Star Wars. Um, I think they should stop not mentioning her as a, um, gray Jedi. I do think she is awesome and that she has the potential of being a gray Jedi. So she could be our little push to accepting the gray Jedi vocabulary from Star Wars. The idea of a gray Jedi within live action and canon, you know, I think gray Jedi should be a canon, uh, at this point, um, you know, we, we can, we can all see the, the, the Jedi Knights and, uh, and the Sith C connecting with each other and doing their own gray thing, you know. Um, but I guess that's a really convoluted thing to to try to explain, because if if we look at the comics of of Kator and we see the gray Jedi's, we do end up seeing some characters that at some point they dwell accidentally in the dark side, because you you like like uh, Yoda says. Um, you shouldn't be dwelling and dealing with the dark side, not even if it's just for any small good reason, you know? There's always a possibility, and there will always be a possibility that uh, dwelling in the dark side will take you straight into the dark side, and you're gonna be all destroyed. Because if we look at every single character that has dwelled in the dark side, we know for sure that at some point, Karma fucks them up. What happened to Anakin? He lost everything. What happened to uh, Darth Maul? He gets killed. Even though he's revived a few times, he gets killed. Um, Count Dooku, head slide off. At some point, you're gonna get fucked at some shape, you know? Um, so, it is a thing, you know? That's, and I'm pretty sure that's probably why they don't wanna add the gray Jedi-ness to the world of Star Wars when it comes to canon, you know? It's it probably a thing, you know? But anyways, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being here. And thank you all for being awesome. I'm Andrew Van Stark, and this is your safe space to go Star Wars and music. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Adios, amigos. May the Force be with you. And as always, stay strong, because if you're not using the Force, you'll be a disturbance to the galaxy. Bye! The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. This was Star Wars Chatter, your safe space with Star Wars, music, video games, and other geeky topics. Listen on AMP, the Amazon Radio app. And get yourself started by listening to my music on every major music platform under Andrew Van Lark. But if you want to have more information, go to my website, 
www.andrewvanzart.com where you can find all my social medias, music, and everything else all in one page. Trust in the force, no lights beating, and buckle up. Now, you're listening with power. Power to the music, and may the force be with you. TV! <laughs>